the BLAST trial, uh, we now have a really long-term follow-up of more than four years. So the data is mature. We now can really clearly say um, this with the high response rates, what does it mean for the patients long-term? Are patients going to be cured? It looks like it, that there are going to be about half the patients being cured with this modality. So the sequence of blunitumab plus transplant or blunitumab and no transplant in elderly patients. There is a significant proportion of patients, majority of patients in that setting which will be cured. So what is the, uh, the key uh, side effect that we have seen? And this is not unique to blunitumab. This is actually been seen every therapy that immunological therapy that engages with CD19 as a target on uh, the leukemic cells and uses uh, as effective mechanism T cells can be CAR T cell therapy and also map, we see neurotoxicity. And the rate of that was in, uh, in the pivotal trial, the BLAST trial, uh, 14% of grade 3 or grade 4 neurotoxicity. So, but as blintamap is a uh, short drug with very short half-life, only just two hours, by just um, switching off blintamap to continuous infusion, patients actually uh, clinically resolve those problems within 48 hours back to baseline. So there's no long-term effects that we personally have seen clinically in these patients. Um, so that is very different to the CART therapy where you have some patients actually going all the way and actually being going onto ICU and dying from it. So it is very, in my mind, a very safe drug in that situation. And we know also exactly uh, when this occurs, it occurs within the first seven, eight days after initiating therapy. So you just keep the patient in, you watch them, see what happens. And there only will be a few patients down the road later on when you continue therapy, which will experience neurotoxicity as a late onset. So taking down that, you, um, it is maybe only just 2% overall the whole population that will have neurotoxicity in outside of the hospital system. But then guidance and teaching the patients, relatives, really helps in reducing also detrimental risks if that occurs in those patients. Apart from that, uh, we have not seen any cytokine re syndrome. I mean, that's very clear because you don't have a huge target volume to battle with. Uh, so uh, cytokine re syndrome is a very rare event and if it isn't just grade one, but it's not grade three or in that context, it doesn't, patients don't have to enter the ICU in that situation. And the other one that occasionally has been seen are ID problems, infectious disease problems, but that's related most likely to the previous uh, medical history of being treated with chemotherapy, plus that map really depletes all B cells, not just at ALL, but also the B cells that may produce immune globulins. So yes, yeah, puts patients a little bit more at risk for infectious complications. But once you recognize that, that can be also be treated by substituting for IVGs or in a selected patient, maybe giving them um, uh, antibiotic prophylaxis in that sense. So it is after getting over the initial start, in my mind, a very safe drug to be used in that context. Leukemia uh, or is something that is treated in Europe by centers. It's not a disease, with acute leukemias, that is treated by uh, private practitioners. So um, the, the patients may, after they have completed blintumab therapy, they may then go later on to the primary practitioners or the specialist in their hometown. But then the therapy is over, so and, and there is no long-term effects that I have seen 
in these patients. Obviously, they're still at risk of getting a relapse, uh, but um, the patients are um, so much in a better condition than the previous chemotherapy patients that may enter that arena down the road, too. So the, the only thing is, is that also physicians as such have to be aware that you are dealing with this neurotoxicity, this late onset neurotoxicity, which is rare. I mean, in the one to two percent of patients may experience this late toxicity. So, and then it could be quite severe. It could be a seizure in that situation. So I think that's the only thing that we may have to educate the broader. Uh, but that can be just done by giving guidance to the family uh, in the paperwork, if this happens, just turn it off. And within two hours, the drug is gone and you have resolved it. So then you just treat then the neurological complication, which would be the seizure, adequately according to the guidelines. The uh, Blinner was only tested so far in uh, Philadelphia positive in the relapse refractory situation. There's no trial in the MRD situation that has been published to show that. Um, so the data there basically mirrors what we've seen in the pH negative relapse refractory situation that you have a response rate beyond 40, roughly around 40 percent, small numbers um, on that clinical trial. So it is within the range that you would see in uh, with the pH negative BCR able um, BLLs. So toxicity profile didn't differ. Uh, there was no additional safety signal in those patients. But nevertheless, the patient's history to get there is different because in the pH positive LL, apart from chemotherapy, you have tyrosine kinase inhibitors that you can use, and they have to have at least two lines of those prior to that. So you could maybe argue that the patients that were treated in the pH positive had more lines of therapies than the guys who were pH negative. In that situation, but it is a drug which is works equally well in those patients.